All right, there's someone who leaves a lot of comments on my videos. Well, maybe not that many comments, but enough criticizing me because I criticize the Black Lives Matter movement and I criticize a lot of the mindsets that are floating around the far left. And uh, basically saying that, uh, pre essentially saying that I lack empathy and that I'm not trying to help anyone. I'm not trying to help minorities. I'm not trying to help this group or that group. And I'm just like, look, I make videos about things that I'm thinking about at the time. Okay. Uh, really, he really, really criticized me when I mentioned that, uh, yeah, there were, there have been points where I had actually considered, hmm, is Trump really that bad? Hmm. You know, trying to weigh things out. And instead of just trying to get me to see what's messed up about Trump's side of things, it's just, let it's time to criticize Kazoom. Call him Kekazoom or whatever, right? And it's just like, yeah, that, that doesn't help. That doesn't change my mind. That doesn't change my views. Just like calling someone a racist or sexist or homophobic or xenophobic or, or any of these things, yet calling them those things doesn't change their views. I mean, you can successfully make someone feel bad for having their views, but you're not going to change their views by doing that. Okay? Now, one of the, my problems with this person who criticizes me is that he has some of the very viewpoints that I speak against. Uh, he essentially says that all cops are bad and that I should, I should really consider the things that Robin D'Angelo said in her book, White Fragility, and uh, that uh, demographical quotas are a good thing. It's what's needed to balance everything out. And basically the whole equality of outcome thing. I mean, everything that, that I generally speak against. So, you know, I suppose I should take his viewpoints with a grain of salt. But I have a hard time doing that. I have a hard time with the idea of not listening to people. You know, if someone says something that rings true uh, or makes me wonder or makes me fathom something, it doesn't matter who said it. You know, they've made me think about something. So, I made a, uh, a text post earlier today talking about how in Louisiana, the Supreme Court in Louisiana, a panel of six people, uh, five of them were white men. One of them was an African-American uh, woman. Uh, yeah, they, they refused to review a case of, oh, what's his name? Uh, Fair Wayne Bryant, a 62-year-old black man, who in 1997 was sentenced to life in prison for attempting to steal some hedge trimmers. Yeah, you heard that right. A ridiculous, a ridiculous sentence. And the five white men said, oh yeah, that's okay, that's appropriate. And the black woman is like, hey, this is, this is a ridiculous sentence. This is, how can you say this is a, a, a worthwhile sentence. And the, some of the arguments go basically say, well, you know, he's been convicted in the past of some different things. I think it was 1978 he was convicted. I think it was armed robbery. There, there was something that uh, that was violent, and he served 10 years for it. Then at some point in the late 80s, I think he forged a check for $150, and I think it was 1992 that there was some other 
there was some other theft charge. I might have the 80s, the 80s one and the 1992 one. I might have those two swapped around. But, uh, you know. And then, of course, in 1997, he tried to steal some head shears, hedge trimmers, and gets a life sentence over it. And this is reflective of Louisiana's pig laws, um, which disproportionately affect black men. Now, someone could have a debate on as to why it disproportionately affects black men. That could be for a different discussion. The main thing is that these laws are designed to more severely punish repeat offenders. And it reminds me of how in the 1990s, Bill Clinton pushed for the idea of, uh, you know, three strikes, you're out. And I think about how at the time I regrettably kind of went along with that, thought, oh, that's not a bad idea. You know, three felonies and you're out. But I didn't think at the time about what could be considered a felony. You know, there's a lot of things that are considered felonies. And, you know, I just didn't think about the ramifications for it. Nobody really at that time was giving decent arguments against the three strikes and you're, and you're out kind of thing. So, you know, I definitely think the more severe cases, yeah, you... you something like murder or rape or... I mean, I don't even think they should be given the three chances for those types of things. But for uh, for theft, for writing a forged check, you know, three, three strikes and you're out and you, you get to have life in prison, it just seems like there's a lot more of a chance for rehabilitation than that, you know? I also think about how there were times when, when people first started talking about uh, zero tolerance policies in just a number of places, I I thought, oh, that's that's not a bad idea. Again, not thinking about the ramifications of it. There's a lot of laws that there are way too excessive penalties for. You know, we need to work on that. We also need to make some things... I mean, come on. The, the, the war on drugs... I've said before that I think the war on drugs is kind of racist. Different, different cultures have different drugs that uh, they gravitate towards. You know, the typical white culture gravitates towards alcohol. That's been changing in time, but, you know... Um, punishing someone for something they're putting into their body. I mean, punish someone if they've done something terrible while being on those drugs, then you punish them with the crime that they committed, right? Not with the fact that they put something into their body. I mean, if someone doesn't have the right to their own body, I mean, how can you say you have, you really have that many rights, you know? So... You know, there's a lot of laws that need to be changed. A lot of penalties for not following the laws that need to be changed. You know, we need to focus more on rehabilitation. Um, prisons for profit is, is, a, is a terrible thing. We have more of our population in prison than any other country. It's ridiculous. You know, we need to change a lot of that. You know, we shouldn't... Oh, just put him in jail. Just put him in jail. And it just doesn't, it's not a, it's not a very good position, right? And as I've said before, you know, we do need police reform. Police need to be taught better uh, de-escalation techniques. They need to learn to deal with people who have mental issues better. They need to deal with people who are on drugs better. They need to deal with uh, domestic domestic issues better. They need a lot more training. They we need we also need a better way of weeding out bad police. There there's a lot that can be done. I just 
disagree with some of these notions that are coming out of a lot of these protests. You know, no, th those are not the answers. You know, we need reform. We don't need to tear the entire thing down and then try to rebuild. Because the problem is, it's far easier to tear things down than it is to rebuild. And if we just try to do some of these things, then we'll end up tearing down and then not really being able to rebuild. And then what do we have? We have a mess. So we need to try to fix what we have. You know? This whole tearing down the whole thing is just not a good idea. As I've said before, you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. But, uh, yeah, Louisiana, man. Louisiana has a really awful history of uh, a lot of injustices. Let's just put it that way. Um, anyway, I guess I don't know what more to say. Uh, thanks for watching and banana fungus.